Greetings radio people, welcome back to The Shack once more. Today is the 18th of April 2020. I still don't seem to have the coronavirus, so we can get on with some more projects. Excellent. Before we do, I wanted to answer a question that quite a few people have asked me. And the question is, why don't I use the Arduino Nano or one of the more common Arduino boards for my projects? Why do I use the STM32? Well, here's a good question. Um, I looked on Amazon this morning. This is an Arduino Uno, and these are currently $8.99. This is an Arduino Nano, and currently I could get one of these delivered tomorrow, probably, for £4.98. This is the STM32, uh, Blue Pill as it's called, which runs. It's an F103C STM32 processor from ST Micros. Um, these are currently £3 delivered. Now, I wrote some silly code, this stuff on the left here, and there's basically a for statement. And this, what this is doing is calculating pi using some bonkers, iterative, loopy maths, but it uses floating points, so it'll exercise the processor quite well. And this I've set up at the moment to run 100,000 times around this loop because it's an iterative uh, recursive type of algorithm. I take a timestamp at the beginning and a timestamp at the end and then calculate how long basically it's taken the processor to run this piece of code. So Arduino Nano, this one here, 29.6 seconds. This piece of junk here, the blue pill, three seconds. So it's cheaper and it's 10 times faster. Arduino Nano, don't want one of those. Let's get on with the project. So I've been thinking for a while, um, as a fan of six meters, which I am, that I'd like to create um, a six meter beacon. Now, I always, I'm a big fan of CW, as you've probably gathered, so I'd quite like to make a CW beacon for my, uh, for my home that I could leave running when I'm around or not here or not actually on the radio. So I started thinking about how to send CW. Now I've done CW transmitters in the past using uh, DDS and Arduino and various other things. Quite a few things on my blog about this topic. But I found something a while ago and I can't remember where I found it and I can't find it again. But this idea does not belong to me, it belongs to somebody else. But I'd like to share it with you because this is a really, really nifty way of converting characters to ones and zeros for a computer to send CW. I've not seen it done like this before and I think it's dead clever. So what you basically do, the um, in this Excel sheet that I've got here, the values in the decimal columns are the yellow ones and these sort of pinky ones here, these uh, salmon-y type colored ones here, these are stored in a two-dimensional array within our software. So this is a C declaration of a two-dimensional array. It's 59 by two, which is index zero to one, zero to 58. That's one of the great features of C. We love that. Anyway, so what happens here basically is if you read in a character from either a, a string or from a memory card or from the serial port or from wherever you want to read it from, if you then cast that to an integer value, C will give you the ASCII value of that character. So if we take a for example, we say the character A in uppercase, of course, the ASCII value is 65. So we start off with an integer value of 65. If we subtract 32 from whatever that ASCII value is, that will take us to 33. If we then use 33 to look up in this table, we'll return a value of 64 and a value of 2 in this case. The 64 in binary is this bit pattern here, and the 2 tells me to only send the most significant two bits. So in this case, I would send dit da, dida, the character of A. If we look at B, that's ASCII 65, subtract 32, takes us to the 34th, so the index is 34. That give, returns me a decimal value of 128, which this is the binary pattern. And this but number here, the number 4, tells me to send the top four most significant bits of that back pattern, which in this case is 1000. So that clearly is da did it it, which is B. And so it goes on. So this table here, from space through all the punctuation, the numbers, and then the alphabet, you send it the ASCII value minus 32, and it returns the decimal value and the number of bits to send from the most significant end. And then if you turn your ones and zeros into dits and dars, you get your CW character. Genius! 
So my next thought on this topic when I was um, thinking about a beacon was that it would be really nice if we could, as well as sending a CW beacon, we could also send a message in Whisper. Now, quite some time ago on my blog, I wrote some code that did Whisper using Arduino, and I started to look that up and research how I'd done it and think about finding the code from 53,000 years ago, and I couldn't find it, and blah, blah, blah. And then through the door drops the May 2020 copy of Radcomic. And in here, absolutely excellent, is an educational whisper transmitter, an Arduino-based whisper transmitter, very much experimental, designed for makers to have a play with. And this is by a guy called Anthony, F4GOH, who's also got a KB1GOH call sign. So, of course, I've downloaded and stolen his code, stuck it into my STM32 code, um, done some timing so that we basically send the whisper beacon every 10 minutes and then every other minute I send the CW beacon on different frequencies um, and the other thing to note of course is that this project in Radcon uses a real-time clock so I've added the real-time clock to my setup I'll show you the fritzing diagram in a minute but this is a really neat and nifty project and really well done to Anthony. This is a great kind of thing that I like to see in Radcliffe. Most excellent. As ever, I'd say if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. Here's the fritzing diagram for this project. Uh, it's the same OLED that we used in the antenna analyzer, in the experimental antenna analyzer. I've used the same thing. Um, this is the uh, STM32. This is the real-time clock, which is a new module. I've not used this before. This is a DS3231. I'll include a link into that. And this is the AD9850 that we've used, the DDS that we've used in quite a few projects now. The output, the RF from the DDS, comes along to my, uh, to my a very simple amplifier that I've created here. Um, it's a very simple single transistor amplifier. And the output of this amplifier actually then goes through a low pass filter. And I've then included, uh, if I come into here, I can show you. I've then included one of these um, that I've got kicking around. It's probably an MMIC inside here, but it seems to give me a quite a clean plus 20 dB. And then I've put another low pass filter on the output of that. And then I've stuck it all in a box. The box is over here. It's not plugged in at the moment, but this is the beacon. So the beacon is now sat in here. Uh, antenna connector, DC power, uh, and then the display here, which displays whether it's transmitting whisper, CW, or shows me the time and the seconds sticking down so I can see when it's about to transmit. That's it. I hope you like it. I'll now talk you through the other bits and bobs. Uh, as ever, please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I'd appreciate your support very much. So a couple of quick things I need to show you in the source code first. So I have included some credits at the top here. So this is F4GOH, as I explained. It's his article from Radcom that I'd nick the Whisper transmit code from. Um, I've also put up here that I can't find where I got the idea of this ASCII to CW from, but again, that's in here. So if you look in the header, I've made sure that the um, pins are all quite clearly labelled for which pins of the DDS you connect, which bits of the OLED. I've used the same display as I used for the antenna analyzer, but I'll link it in down below. These pins that are commented out, I've just done it so that you can see which pins are connected to what, but you don't actually need to declare these four. Um, anyway, the cal factor I've used to adjust the clock frequency to get me exactly on frequency. I used one of my rigs and just set it to set a carrier. This is the CW table that we talked about. So these are the um, decimal values which we convert to binary and then send the number of bits from the most significant end, depending on however many bits we've got in this this list here. So that's that. And then the only other thing to show you really, so that's the CW beacon message. Uh, that's, the, that's the whisper frequency, the CW frequency is up here somewhere, bound to be, bound to be up here somewhere, we'll find it in a minute. But this whisper symbol, this is the one thing I need to talk to you about, so this whisper symbol is automatically generated. I'll include a link to something called the Whisper Encoder Utility. It's something that, um, part of the WSJT suite, you basically create a text file pass it to this utility and it generates these numbers for you. So I haven't done anything clever here, but this will send my call sign 
and my locator so you must change this if you're going to nick it uh, of course there's the um, CW frequency the CW beacon then is on 5030 and then the whisper frequency is 5293 and I've added 30 Hertz here to shift me up in frequency slightly so those are the things I needed to show you in here as I said the main loop of the program simply decides if it's uh, a multiple of 10 minutes then we send the whisper uh, message otherwise if the seconds are at zero so we're at the start of a minute then we send the TX we transmit the CW message we then put key down until the end of the message um, if we're not sending the CW message or the whisper message then we update the time and just display the time on the clock on the, on the display at the front of the, the thing so that's all it does um, it's really quite simple thanks again to um, the Radcom article and Anthony for his genius for the whisper transmit I hope you enjoy the project